Hey guys, Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. As you know, I'm a guy who's all about testing things in homes and residential buildings. And since I test all day long, my toolkit is so important. So I'm gonna spend um, the next couple of videos showing you all of the tools in my kit. It's gonna be more than a couple actually. Um, but I wanted to start today with this. This is my duct tightness testing kit. Now, without getting too much into the weeds, I don't call it a duct leakage testing kit because you're not actually testing duct leakage in real life. You're testing under the sim simulated system where we've got the same pressure in the entire duct system. That's not real the way that it's gonna run in real life. And that's important for you to understand. You can learn more about that in my book and in my training portal. But for right now, let me just show you what I take around with me personally for my own jobs. So first, obviously, is the fan itself. Don't forget to <laughs> take that along with you. This is a duct tester 200. Um, it runs through these calibration rings. Uh, this smallest hole here, when we get to 25 pascals, which is the pressure that we test every single duct system at in my neck of the woods, can only sense down to about 10 CFM. The newer ones that they make can go down to like 0.08 CFM, which I don't really need um, because I, I have a trick for that and I'll tell you about that later. So we've got the low flow ring and the mid flow ring, obviously very important. I have the snorkel, which is what we use to connect the fan to the duct system with. And I'm gonna talk about this in a minute because this is something special. We obviously have the tiny computer which is the DM32, uh, the smart gauge that I like to use now because it's got Wi-Fi capabilities and all kinds of different functionality. We have the power cable, obviously, and then the snake, which connects um, the fan to the tiny computer and also can sense the pressure in the duct system, which is very important because that's how we know that we've gotten the pressure. This is a static pressure probe. Now, the static pressure probe is important to use when you have uh, a pressure that you're trying to sense inside of something that has air moving through it. Now, if I'm testing a duct system that's very tight, there is no reason the air should be moving in there. I should be able to push just a tiny bit of air. So there shouldn't be a problem with turbulence if this thing is testing a tight system. That being said, it does have a nice sharp pointy little end there so I can stick it through my tape, um, which is what I mainly use it for. So that's very nice. So that's the kit here. All of the stuff I'm going to show you fits inside this one box, which is important to save your back and, and all that stuff. Uh, my accessories are over here. First things first, I take a code book with me. This is the International Energy Conservation Code. This is what I will be citing to code officials. And a lot of code officials you'll find if you're not already doing this. By the way, everyone in the United States of America will be doing this test, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to start with it, uh, by 2017 every single state. It's uh, part of the mandate of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act from 2009. It was part of the fine print. So some code officials do not have this book. So you need to have one because if they say, oh, you want the ducts to be tight, but not too tight, which I've had said to me, uh, you want to be able to whip it out and say, where does it say that exactly? So good to carry. I have my uh, template here. If I'm connecting directly to a, uh, the air handler cabinet, which is a really good idea if the air handler cabinet is installed, then I want to be able to have a really easy way to do that and just use a little bit of tape. If I try to connect this thing to a duct cabinet, I've got all kinds of tape that I need to do. So this is super easy. I literally cut a box apart that I found. Now, the one special thing here is that I'm using this aluminum tape uh, that's called Flex Fix. Here it is right here, and I take this with me as well. This is what you use to fix flex duct um, on the outside, and that's because I'm going to use duct tape or uh, gaffer's tape to connect this to the cabinet, and it will not stick to this stuff. It will stick and rip apart my cardboard if I uh, am using this a lot. So this is just one, to make, one way to make your uh, template more durable. I've used this probably 20 times. And the last thing is I carry tapes like crazy. Like I said, this is a flex fix. This is something that the uh, HVAC installer who is on site with you when you do this test, very important, um, might run out of because you're going to find so much leakage. And you could say, hey, you know what? Here's some easy way to, to make a friend. Uh, this is gaffer's tape. It's very strong and it's uh, very usable. So you can rip this apart pretty easily. It's uh, one grade up from duct tape but it's nice and high quality and it's black and it's uh, sexy. And like you know that I always talk about being sexy is very important, not in a sexual way, but looking like you know what you're doing and looking like a badass. So anytime you can make your duct system setup 
look like, wow, this is so well put together. And if you've run this test, you know there's tape all over the place. It looks like a mess. And it's dusty. I did not clean this stuff up for you because this is actually what it looks like. I use this stuff all the time. So gaffer's tape. I also have a great big roll of duct tape that I take with me. I carry tapes all over the place because sometimes you're in a construction zone and there's a lot of dust and you can't use masking tape, et cetera, et cetera. This is duct mask. I do a whole other video that you can click on. Uh, there's a message on the screen inviting you to check out more about tapes. Um, this is another one that you'll see in that video. And uh, behind all of this stuff, you see Mr. Lonely back here in a plastic bag. Um, this is kept in a plastic bag because it is disgusting. This is a very important thing to have. This is a theatrical fog machine. You got this at uh, any kind of uh, music shop or any place where rock stars would go to hang out. That's where you get this. This thing cost me 40 bucks. I keep it in a plastic bag because it's really gross. If you have one of those little uh, fog puffers, you know that glycol gets all over your hands and it's all sticky. This stuff makes all of this gear really sticky if I carry it in the same bag. So I don't do that. I carry it separately. This is important because when you find problems, if you have a, a test fail, you want to immediately be like, hey, you know what? Bad news. Uh, by the way, I already got paid. So it's not bad news for me. It's just bad news for you. And that's important for you to remember. Um, but I am here to save the day. I'm going to show you exactly where it's leaking as long as the ducts are still exposed because I brought along my handy dandy theatrical fogger. Now, when you're running this test on new construction, which is the only way I run this test, I do not do this test on existing homes that I am looking to improve with retrofits. And that's because this test won't show you where the duct leaks are when a house is finished. What will show you that is a pressure pan test, which you can read about in my book. Very easy to do, costs almost no money, and you're already doing a blower test. So, do that on existing homes, but on new construction, when you're doing this, the analysis of your test is based on the size of the area that this duct system that you're testing serves. Now, sometimes you'll have an addition that's 400 square feet and it has its own duct system. That means that we're gonna have four hundreds of square feet. And according to my uh, rules for the 2012 IECC, I'm only allowed four CFM per hundred square feet. That means a total leakage of 16 CFM. That's very tight. Like I said, this thing will only sense 10 CFM. Uh, and even then I have to jack the pressure up and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Now, uh, one thing that you should always be very careful of is obviously we're doubting ourselves and that's important because you want to know for a fact that you did the test right. It's very easy to do this test wrong and then it doesn't mean anything. It's even worse because you said you did something and you actually didn't. So when you run your test up to 25 pascals and you get the CFM flow through your fan, what I always do is turn this down to half pressure. And what you'll see happen on the flow is it'll cut to two thirds of the flow that it was at 25, not half. If it doesn't track like that, you are doing something wrong. So that's the first QC that you want to do. The second thing that you might think of is, hmm, if I have 16 CFM to pass or less and I test and it's at 30, number one, that's still very tight for most systems. Like congratulations to the poor installer who is sitting there crying because he didn't pass his test and has to pay another several hundred dollars to have this test done over again once he's done sealing it. Uh, but also, is it my fault? Is there something wrong with my test equipment? And this is very important for you to ask because yes, there probably is wrong stuff with your test equipment. First thing that you might notice if you have a setup like this is your snorkel. This is flex duct. I take this in and out of construction sites all day long. It's dusty. There's sharp things. Does this thing have holes in it? Yes, my snorkel has holes in it. And if someone notices that before you notice it, then we have a problem. So I'm going to show you the inside of this real quick. When you stick your head inside of your snorkel, you will notice that you can see stars everywhere. There are pinholes all up and down this flex duct that I'm using to test duct work. Holes in my snorkel? Oh no! Does it matter? I'm sure it probably does matter. Um, however, how much does it matter? Let's figure it out. We happen to have a test device. That is the right question. So you have to know what the question is in order to know how to test it. We want to know how much this uh, snorkel leaks. Let's go ahead and test it. We're going to run a duct test on our snorkel. Now 
Now, I have created a duct system that I have my test fan hooked up to. I'm going to inflate this thing with air. I want to run a pressurization test, not a depressurization test, because I don't want to suck all the air out of this and make it squished up and make it seal all those little pinholes. I want to know how bad the pinholes are so that I can know for a fact that I am not cheating my clients out of an extra couple of CFM. I want to know, is it 10 CFM? Is it 100 CFM? I don't know unless I test it. So I've already plugged in my smoke machine um, because this thing takes a few minutes to warm up. The little light on the top will go out like it has right now because it's been plugged in for a few minutes. Once that has happened, then when I press this little red button, it'll create fog for me and shoot it into my fan. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is get this guy running. And I have to remember to monitor the pressure inside my duct system. Now, in order to pump this thing full of smoke, I'm just going to go ahead and depress this, and it blows it right in there. All right. I hope that you're seeing this. See all of the smoke coming out of my flex duct here? That looks pretty bad, but it's not as bad as you think, and that is because I have to actually measure how much air leakage. Some air leakage is okay. If it's one CFM, I'm not worried. If it's 100, I am worried. So what we're gonna do is run this to 25 pascals. So as you can see, my fan is running at 0.1% of its total speed, and that takes me to 50 pascals, over twice the pressure that I want to be at, and even at 0.1% speed, I can't get a reading on my flow channel. What that means is not that it's zero. It means that what I can do is simply up the pressure, but keep it at 25, my correction factor, so that I can read a flow at 25, even though I'm not actually at 25 during my test. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over to speed setting, and I'm gonna go to 1% speed. Whoa, 10 times harder than I was pushing before. And I'm going to at 25. So I'm already at 80 pascals, Past 100, still no reading on channel B. Aha! Finally. Okay, so now we're at about 150 or 160 pascals, and I'm able to get a reading of 5.7 CFM at 25 pascals. What that means is that if I am running this test and there is an error of 5 CFM, then that could be due to the pinholes in my snorkel. So if I need a 16 and I'm testing a 21, that could be my equipment and I could write that into my uh, report. But if it's 16 that I need and I'm actually testing 30, it's definitely not my equipment and it's definitely the fault of leakage in the duct system. So that is how insistent you need to be on having the test data, even on your own test data. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Tune in for future uh, videos where I'm going to be showing you other tools from my kit. I'm Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. Tune in next time.